Alrighty, thank you guys for coming out today. Uh, you know, I'd like to introduce myself first. I'm Casey uh, with Captive Air, and today we're going to be going over uh, one of Captive Air's newest uh, units in our lineup, our DOAS, our Paragon unit. First, I'd like to talk a little bit about Captive Air and so some of the history behind Captive Air. Uh, we got our starts in 1976 as, the, uh, as a commercial kitchen ventilation company. We make hoods, exhaust fans, makeup air units. And uh, kind of the natural progression to that is uh, as we added fans, makeup airs, and those types of things, we've added a, now a rooftop line to our equipment lineup. Uh, our rooftop line, our Paragon unit, is what we're going to be talking about today. Specifically, what this rooftop unit does is it uh, is a dedicated outdoor air system, or DOAS unit. So what this unit is going to specialize in is processing 100% outside air. Uh, so we're going to go through our unit today and talk about some of the components that go into our DOAS unit and the construction of it. Um, a few things to point out about our unit, we'll kind of start off a little bit with generic sizing. Our units go from a size 1 to a size 5. The one we're standing in front of here today is our size 2 cabinet. And for nominal tonnage, we go from 5 ton all the way up to 30 tons. Uh, so our size 1 is going to be more of a standard rooftop unit that can handle full recirc or 100% outside air. But it's going to be more of the size of a standard rooftop unit. And our size 5 is going to be more of an air handler that you'd see for 100% pure DOAS applications. Uh, some of the times where we might see one of these DOAS units is uh, not only do we use them in kitchen makeup air now, where we're using these units to provide the makeup air for a kitchen, where we're removing the dedicated makeup air unit and the rooftop unit. We're eliminating two units, replacing it with one unit that does the work of both of them. Uh, beyond kitchens, though, is really where this unit is most frequently used, and that comes from hotel corridor ventilation, schools, grocery stores, grow houses, laboratories, anywhere that really needs a lot of fresh outside air, we're going to be using a DOAS for our Paragon unit. Uh, even in our size 1 cabinets, we're using these as rooftop replacements where uh, outside air is at a premium of fresh, high quality air. This unit will now be able to replace a standard rooftop unit that recycled air or recirculated 90% of the air it's moving we now have the option to do that or provide 100% outside air with our size 1 cabinet. We'll go on a tour of our unit here following the airflow from when it enters the unit to how we process it and where it exits and all the components that go into that. So we'll move you guys around to the intake side of the unit and we'll get started. Alrighty, now that we've moved over to the intake side of the unit, um, this is where our air first enters the unit. This is our intake, uh, louvered intake here. Um, we use a louvered intake rather than an outdoor air hood, and this shortens up the footprint of the unit on the precious rooftop space that we're allotted. We want to make this rooftop unit have it as limited a footprint as possible. So this louvered intake here allows us to reduce that overall footprint of the unit while still providing us proper rain and snow coverage. So even at its highest velocities um, of air moving through this, you know, our rain and snow is not going to be able to enter the unit. And as it hits our louvered intake here, we're going to be able to drain that down the unit and out. Uh, so we have no issues with rain coming into the unit. This louvered intake is, is a great added benefit to us to keep the unit compact. On the bottom side of the unit here, we'll see where our side return would be if we had a side return option on this unit. So we would have our ductwork coming in. Uh, we have options for a smoke. Uh, detector and alarm system in there that can either be factory mounted or we can have the terminals to have that mounted in the ductwork uh, upstream of the return. Um, we can also have a down return on this unit as well. Now this unit doesn't have one of the options that I'll talk about next which is our energy recovery wheel, our ERV system. That would be going where I am standing right here. It's a module that adds on, it's a full enthalpy energy recovery wheel and our exhaust air is going to come up the bottom of the unit, out the side, through the energy recovery wheel that's spinning at a low RPM, and our inside air is going to come through that full enthalpy recovery wheel and through the unit. Um, this is a module add-on to the unit. Uh, it's not a standalone ERV system, but it adds on uh, an extra cabinet length to the unit, and it comes with powered exhaust as well. 
So as long as you guys don't have any questions on the intake or return side of the unit, uh, we'll move over to the uh, cooling coils and some of the components that go into processing the air. Alrighty, now that we've made our way to the uh, intake side of the unit, the first thing that our air is going to encounter when it comes through is our outside air damper. Um, our outside air damper right here, as you can see, is a geared mechanism. Uh, we don't have any play or slop inside of this gear mechanism. There's, this damper is not going to move on us. We're not going to have the slop that a traditional RTU unit is going to have on their economizer or intake air damper. Why is this so important to us? Well, building balance is important and knowing how much air we're bringing into the space is important for us as well. So. This damper, although a simple assembly, had a lot of engineering that went into it to make sure that we know how much outside air we're processing and we know the balance between return air and outside air on the unit itself. Um, it exceeds the Class 1A leakage standard, so any energy code requirements that we have, this damper is going to exceed those requirements. Once we get into the unit, we're going to go through a bird screen and then our metal mesh uh, cleanable filter. This metal mesh filter is a standard on most of our outdoor air units that are processing outside air. Two inches thick cleanable metal mesh filter, pretty standard. Uh, once we get past the pre-filtering on this unit, we'll, we'll want to know how much load we have in this mixed air area. So we want to know temperature and humidity of the air that we're going to be processing in this unit. That comes with our a web of temperature sensors. Inside of the unit, you can see that there's a, there's a handful of wires in there, and they run across the intake of the unit where we're not getting a single point temperature, but we're getting an average of all the air moving into the unit, so we know precisely how much uh, load we're taking on and what we need to process through this unit. Now that we know how much air is being brought in, we have fur further filtering. We have four inches of filters that can be placed into the unit. Um, currently we have a MERV-8 and a MERV-13 that are in there. This could be replaced with a four inch HEPA filter or a, uh, a four inch uh, MERV-15 filter if we needed. Um, so really we can outfit this unit with any type of filtration needs the customer has for their, uh, for their application. Uh, furthermore, with our return, when we're using an ERV or powered exhaust or return system, we can add additional filtration to the return on the unit as well if we need to. Uh, we will always use it when we use an energy recovery wheel to protect that wheel from having added particulate and clogging up that filter and uh, pre preventing itself from performing at max efficiency, which requires a nice clean filter. Um, so we have a pre-filter for our ERV that would be on our powered exhaust unit. Uh, now that we're past our filter section, we'll move on to our coils. You can see that we have a, a five-row uh, five coil section on this. This is our, our smallest amount of rows on a unit. We go up to seven coils or seven rows of uh, coils on our unit. Um, this is, you know, almost double of what a standard RTU would have on its coils. A standard RTU is going to have three or four uh, rows of coils on their unit. And why do we need more coils? Well, we're processing a lot of latent load of outside air. We're not processing a lot of recirc air traditionally on these units. So we need to have cooling power associated with that. Also, we want to make sure we're efficiently uh, processing that air, so we have a staggered coil design. This allows us to not have any pass-through of the air on the unit. So all the air that's moving through this unit is going to hit this cooling coil. Uh, we're going to bring it down past the saturation point of that air, so we're removing the max amount of humidity from the air, and then we're going to have a reheat coil uh, as an option on this unit. Typically here in Minnesota we would use this and this is going to bring us back up to a comfortable room temperature so we're not over chilling a space. Um, we'll talk about how we modulate with our compressor on the other side of the unit but on this side we can see our electronic expansion valve. This allows us to precisely control our superheat, make sure that our superheat in the refrigeration cycle is optimal for our outdoor air temperature and the load that we're uh, encountering with this unit. Um, it also allows us to reverse the cycle on the unit and turn into a heat pump to allow us to heat during the shoulder seasons where we don't want to turn on our burner. Um, when we're removing all of that condensation from the unit, we have uh, a stainless steel drain pan with a factory mounted and uh, standard uh, float switch. So the float switch on the unit uh, will come up and down and when we 
have a clogged uh, condensation drain, we will know that there's condensation building up and a fault will alert us and it can even be texted or emailed to the building manager or the service company uh, via our cast link system, which we'll uh, touch on once we get to the controls of the unit. Um, unless we have any questions here, we'll talk about how we handle the air and how we move that air in the system. Um, here is our blower cabinet. You can see we have a direct drive mixed flow wheel. Everything on this unit is fully modulating, direct drive. We, we have the unit built for reliability, a 25 plus year lifespan and efficiency. When we're processing all this outside air, we need to have maximum efficiency. So everything on this unit is built to modulate. So not only does, does our compressor modulate with our cooling coil, but we have a modulating uh, blower fan. So this is direct drive. This one happens to be EC driven, uh, but we also can have a VFD driven motor in our larger horsepower sizes. Um, so we can ramp up and down the speed that we need. This air is then pushed through our lower cabinet here, which is our indirect bent tube heater. Um, it passes through there in, in heating modes when we need to heat those uh, natural gas uh, furnace will turn on. We also have LP and electric heat. Those have a seven to one turn down for natural gas, five to one for LP and 10 to one for electric heat. Um, once it's processed through the heating cabinet, it will then be discharged, either side discharge where I'm standing here coming out towards us or a down discharge option. Um, just like we had our, our intake temperature stat was a web of uh, temperature readings averaging, so is, our, so is our discharge temperature readings. It's a web of temperature sensors that averages the temperature and humidity of the air that has now been processed and leaving the unit. This helps us because the air doesn't have much room to mix or fully integrate itself with all the air that's moving through the unit. So having an average of all the air moving through is gonna give us a more true reading than a single point temperature sensor. Um, our furnace here has a 25 year uh, warranty on it. And uh, that's, our, that's our indirect bent tube furnace has a 25 year warranty and the rest of the components on this unit have a five year warranty. Uh, that comes standard on the unit, yes. Is it stainless steel? Yep, our, our, our burner section is a 409 stainless steel burner. And uh, we'll start to move to the other side of the unit and we'll be able to check on uh, the, the powered exhaust for that burner and all the controls that modulate all the system that we've seen on this side here. Alrighty, now we're moving on to the control side of the cabinet. Uh, we are talking about our indirect bent tube furnace and uh, the first component that we see here is our uh, powered exhaust uh, that uh, goes out the back of the unit. It also has a flue attachment that we, we can use if needed. Um, and then our gas train that feeds the indirect uh, bent tube furnace. So our standard uh, gas train is gonna come with an inlet pressure gauge, a pressure monitoring, combination valve, modulating valve behind this column here, and a manifold gas pressure gauge. So when a service comes to operate this unit, they don't need gauges and things of that nature to come and look at the pressure in the gas train. They can just check out any of what number of our sensors here and know exactly what type of uh, gas they have coming into the unit. Um, now, being fully modular, this unit, uh, it's designed so that if a certain component were to fail in the event of failure, uh, such as our uh, indirect bent tube furnace, let's say at, uh, uh, year 18 of the unit, for some reason it, it had a failure and we needed to replace this under warranty, this center column comes out and we can remove the furnace and put in a brand new one. It's a full module, so we can just roll that old furnace right out, remove the gas train, put it back in, attach the gas train, and we're off and away. Um, now, up to our control system. How do we control the unit? How do we schedule the unit? And how do we process information? That's all through what we call our HMI, our human machine interface. This is a four button uh, touch screen here in our unit. There's one that will be mounted integral to the unit and we can have up to four in the space. Each one of these HMI screens can have temperature and humidity. Uh, they have temperature and humidity capabilities to read temperature and humidity. And we can use those as space averaging in a big warehouse to know what type of building conditions we're actually getting. 
We could also mount one of these in a manager's office so they can uh, remotely access settings and we could turn off the temperature and humidity sensor for a specific room if it was just a monitoring or mechanical room to operate this unit. Um, this, this control panel here, uh, what differentiates the controls on our unit compared to some of the competitors in the industry is we don't need external softwares or programs to run this system. It's all integral to the unit, so a technician can come in and service this unit straight off of the HMI. They can also call our tech support line and they can walk them through all of the programs that you would see on an HMI screen. Um, so they can run them through that. Uh, furthermore, our control panel and board inside runs our VFD compressor. Um, our VFD compressor, we use a, a true variable speed compressor. It's a D Dan Foss compressor. It's an inverter duty scroll compressor and it modulates with true variable speed. What does that mean? Well, there's two types of scroll compressors that people will use in a, in a system like this to match load. Ours is an inverter duty scroll compressor, meaning we can change the amount of hertz that the, that the compressor is running at. We're actually changing the speed that the scroll is running at. This changes our refrigerant volume that's running through the system, so we can load match what temperature air and humidity of air we're processing. Uh, some competitors will use digital scroll compressors. Now, these have load matching, but they don't have the efficiency that an inverter scroll compressor has. Why is that? It's because a, do, in a, a digital scroll compressor has its compressor running at 100% speed all the time. The scroll is now moving up and down to change the volume while running at 100% speed. When your design days are only 10% of its operating days, why have a compressor that only runs at its design 100% speed? We want this thing to be efficient and having a full inverter duty variable speed scroll compressor is going to give us that efficiency in the unit that you don't see in other manufacturers. Uh, that compressor is really the heart and soul of the cooling system on this unit. Uh, so we have many safeties that go into our single circuit scroll compressor. Uh, we have accumulators, we have filter dryers, we have pressure and temperature sensors through the through the refrigeration cycle measuring our suction uh, temperatures and pressures so we know what our superheat is. Um, we have a pump down cycle on the unit to allow any of the fluid that has accumulated to be removed. These are all the types of things that really wear and tear on a compressor and will cause it to prematurely fail. We've protected this compressor with all those things and sensors that can tell if something is out of line. Uh, those alerts and faults can be found on our HMI screen but they're also monitored through our cast link, which we'll get into a little bit later. Uh, along with our full variable speed unit, we also have full variable speed out, outdoor air fans. Those are EC driven direct drive outdoor air fans on the top of the unit that can modulate to match our load and make sure that our temperature on our suction lines or outdoor coil lines is perfect. Uh, we have very specific delta T's that we're looking for in our air moving across those coils and these fans can modulate to match that so it furthers our efficiency at partial loads when those don't need to be running at full speed. All of these components are made to fully modulate and be as efficient as possible. That's why we've gained efficiencies that are one and a half times uh, current industry standards and far exceeds any energy codes that currently exist. This unit is built for future energy codes and maximum efficiency to save the end user uh, operating costs in the long run. Uh, the end user also has many other benefits of this unit. Uh, the first one I'd like to talk about is CAS service. These units all come standard with a commissioning with a captive air technician. They're a captive air employee. They only commission captive air equipment such as our Paragon DOAS line. So once this unit is gassed up and has uh, its electricity hooked up, our CAS service tech will come out and fully commission the unit, make sure that everything is running per design and spec to make sure the end user is getting what we designed and what they paid for. It's really a great option for this unit as the installers, once they have this thing set up, it's, the rest of it is taken care of by a captive air technician that knows these units inside and out. It's a huge benefit added for us. In addition to uh, CAS service, we also have a proprietary cloud-based building management system called CASLINK. 
This can now take all of the sensors and readings we had in the unit and it puts it online. So we can read out temperatures, intake temperatures, discharge temperatures, humidity. We can take our suction line temperatures and pressures. We can now monitor that via the internet and we can also control the unit via the internet. So this unit here can be controlled remotely and this is at no additional cost to the end user. This is integral to the unit. It comes standard with one year of cell service included with this unit. So if you don't have internet at your site, one year of free service uh, of Castlink attached to this unit. Now if they do have internet at their site and they plug in their ethernet, they now have a full building management system or you know, rooftop management system for free for the life of the unit. They can fully monitor and control this unit remotely via Castlink for no additional cost. The end users really like this not only for ease of service, but they also gives them peace of mind that if something's going wrong and they're not on site, they can call Captive Air and Captive Air can now, our technicians can now know what's going on at their location without even stepping foot onto the site. This allows us to have single site visits for servicing. So we're not coming out to the site multiple times for a service on the unit. We know what's going on with the unit and what could possibly be wrong before we show up. So we have the right parts in hand to service the unit on that first visit and get it done with. Not only that, but it can generate automated reports for the end user. So if we have a facilities manager that wants to know how much con energy consumption we have on this unit, we can do that with Castlink. We can send them generated or auto-generated emails every month telling them their energy consumption and what we've had going on with the unit and potential uh, problems in the future. Uh, Castlink has uh, uh, computer systems that have learned over time. We use AI to uh, learn how these systems operate and it, it can prevent future shutdowns. It knows if we're gonna have a future issue if we have some design parameters that are now coming out of, out of design. So we can know if this unit might fail and a certain component might fail prematurely and we can change settings to prevent that or get a service tech out there before failure to prevent that as well. That's all with Castlink, integral to the unit, free of charge. Um, I kind of breezed over some of the construction of the unit that I'd like to step back to. The construction, standard construction on our unit is a G90 galvanized. We've been using G90 galvanized on our units for almost, uh, for several decades now on our air handlers. And G90 galvanized with, withstands the most rigorous salt and spray tests you, they have out there. Uh, and if the engineer or end user would like a painted option for aesthetics, we do offer that option. Although we believe that G90 galvanized is an upgrade from a painted unit as far as, a, as the lifespan of the unit goes. The unit is gonna withstand the elements more with G90 galvanized over a painted unit. The unit also comes standard with two inches of insulation all throughout the unit. That's an R13 insulation. That's what it's rated for. Um, this is about double what you'll see standard in the industry. So we're trying to meet or exceed everything that we've seen in the industry thus far with rooftop units and uh, exceed that with our Paragon DOAS line. Uh, if you guys don't have any questions on this stuff, the, the controls of the unit, we can get an up close shot of Castlink and look at some of the points that we can monitor via Castlink. Uh, earlier you said that uh, the warranty on the furnace was 25 years. Uh, is that how long you expect this unit to last? I know more, most RTUs are, are not that long at all. Yeah, so a standard RTU, uh, to answer your question, you know, the lifespan of a standard RTU might be, you know, 15 years. Our unit was really designed initially from the ground up with the thought in mind that we're gonna have this unit last 25 years plus. We want this unit to be on the rooftop for the life of the building and to far exceed the life of any other rooftop equipment that might be up there. This one will far exceed that. So our engineers have taken great pride and we, we, we really pride ourselves in this unit and the lifespan that this is gonna have on the rooftop. So yeah, we, we expect this unit to last 25 years, if not longer. Such a robust unit. I assume it takes eight to 12 weeks to build this, is that right? So our lead times, even though we have uh, you know, robust construction, our lead times are actually about standard right now is two to three weeks to build. 
They had come out of one of six of our manufacturing facilities. All six make them, um, but you know we can order from any one of those. Um, so all six manufacturing facilities also stock our parts. That's how we're able to keep our lead times at about a quarter or a half of our competitors. So we have a two to three week lead time on these units as standard. And we've even seen jobs where we're replacing an RTU where it went down on Monday and they had a new unit built and installed by Friday. So we're far exceeding some of the industry standards as far as you know lead times. And when we need to expedite those lead times, we have that option. Um, so that's something we also pride ourselves in is the lead time and something that customers really, um, you know, when their d unit is down is something that's very necessary. I see this is a good um, sturdy unit. Does the doors, the uh, handles on the doors, does this turn like it? Yep, so all these hinge doors that we saw here is, and all the other construction that we talked about today is standard on the unit. So these hinge doors are standard. They they fold in and out. They also come off completely if we're a windy day and we don't want the doors flapping back and forth in the wind. These doors can come fully off just like a unit that doesn't have hinge doors. But for as far as serviceability on a hinge door unit, it's uh, you know the service techs will love this unit not only for its ease of access for servicing on our HMI, but the doors are all hinged. You'll see this not only on our Paragon line but also our Makeup Air line too. If we don't have any more questions, we'll kind of move on to our cast link and some of the points that we can talk about and monitor on cast link. So we talked about a lot of sensors on our units and all the things that we're monitoring, not only on our HMI, and we've kind of talked about cast link and how it's a, uh, a standard option on our units. It comes free of charge. And if they have building internet where they can hook it into the building internet, it's free of charge for the life of the unit. Uh, now we're standing in front of what Castlink looks like online, what we're going to see at our home computers when we're looking at Castlink remotely via our phone or laptop. Um, right now we're looking at uh, the unit, what it was running at over the past uh, day, and we can see the intake humidity, our discharge humidity, our compressor VFD speed. Uh, we could also go through any number of the settings on this unit and look at uh, any number of temperatures, whether it be discharge, our superheat temperatures in the refrigeration cycle, or any number of those things. This, there's more information here than sometimes the end user even wants to know, and that's why we have those auto-generated auto emails that are going to send them really what they want to know, how the unit is running, is it falling within our design parameters every month, and how much energy are we consuming. So those are going to be the, uh, the auto-generated emails that the customer is going to see in their inbox if they would like to opt for that option. But all these other sensors and, and uh, readouts are going to be what uh, our CAS service and tech support team is going to look at remotely to, to remote into the unit and know what's going on prior to showing up or they can even adjust those settings so we can have a remote commissioning almost of this unit for a full year so we can remote in and change in blower speeds or compressor speeds to make sure we're running optimally even after the initial commissioning of the unit. So if the customer says their building is in a negative and we think we need to ramp up our blower speed, no reason to send out a tech to the site. We just call cast service over the phone. They'll remote in and change that blower speed for us all remotely. It's a huge benefit added for our end user and uh, it's something that we see that really differentiates Captive Air uh, and our Paragon unit from competitors in the industry. It's a free management system that comes with the unit and it's, you know, it's one of the prides that we have in our unit. If we have no other questions, I thank you guys for your time today. Really appreciate showing you guys our Paragon unit and certainly if you have any questions, give us a call here at the office. Any number of our technical sales uh, staff will be able to answer, quote out, or design any of these units for you.